this answer of worship. Hallelujah. Every tongue in heaven on earth shall declare your glory. Every new shall bow at the earth road and worship. Jesus, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. We thank you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your awesomeness. We thank you for being our God and for being the God of our lives. We thank you, O oh Lord God, for being there for us. We thank you for how far you have taken us. King of glory, we return all the glory to you in the name of Jesus. My Father, my King, we commit to this digging deep into your hands. We ask, oh God, that you come and have your way in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the past digging deep. We thank you, oh Lord God, for what you have done in our lives. We thank you for the teachings. We thank you, oh Lord God, for everything that you have imparted into our lives. We say, may your name be highly exalted in the name of Jesus. King of glory, we commit to this digging deep into your hands. We ask, oh God, that you have your way in the name of Jesus. 
King of glory, revive us again in the name of Jesus. Father, rekindle us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We commit as many, O oh God, that will that be healed, Lord, into your hands, that you have destined to be healed, Lord, tonight into your hands. Where is that you bring them from far and near in the mighty name of Jesus? Father, have your way. Take your place in Jesus' name. My Lord and my God, nothing will hinder today's digging deep in the mighty name of Jesus. Commit your daughter whom you are going to use to teach us tonight. Father, Lord God, speak through her in the name of Jesus. King of glory, let your word come forth in power in the mighty name of Jesus. We'll be the hearer and the doer in Jesus' name. Thank you, everlasting King of glory. Blessed be to your holy name. We open the service in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hands to Jesus this minute. And bless the name of the Lord. Oh, 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 oh. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. And worship you be exalted, O oh God. And your kingdom shall not pass away. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every name shall pass your throne. And worship you be Thank 
Jesus. Arise. Arise, arise, arise. Arise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You are worthy to be praised and adored. So we will lift up holy hands. You want to go. Singing, blessed be the name. Oh, blessed be the name. things he has done for us let's begin to worship him let's thank him thank him for our jubilee thank him for the convention that just ended let's begin to thank him thank him open your mouth and thank god thank him for his kindness thank him for his goodness we say thank you thank you lord jesus for your grace thank you for your loving kindness we worship and adore you we magnify you Blessed be your name, O God. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. Thank you for a great jubilee. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because our life is filled with celebration. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's begin to thank God for, for the lives that were saved during the convention. Let's begin to worship him. Let's begin to adore him. Let's begin to magnify his holy name thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus we worship you we adore you we magnify you thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus because our joy is full hallelujah hallelujah let's worship him let's worship him let's adore him let's magnify his holy name in the name of jesus thank you lord jesus Blessed be your holy name, King of glory. Blessed be your name, O God. We worship you. We adore you. When you thank God, you're, you're, when you are grateful to God, he said that he will make you to be at the top of whatever thing you do. So let's begin to thank him. Let's worship him. Let's begin to magnify him. Let's begin to thank God for the word that we are going to be hearing today. Let's magnify God. Let's prepare our hearts for the word that is coming. If we do not prepare our hearts, we'll just be here as, as people. Like you, you just came to, to sign register that you came to church today. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to give us understanding of the word that is coming today. Let's begin to thank God. Let's worship him. Let's adore him. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.
We need to thank God. Thank God. Let's begin to pray for God to prepare our heart. Amen. Let's prepare our, let's God prepare our heart. As the word drops, let it remain in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Please shall we be seated. So we're going to continue uh, in today's service as we go into the word. And the topic before us today is very germane and is a topic for the time and for this season that we are in. And once again, I want to wish everybody happy jubilee and not just ordinary jubilee, a perfect jubilee indeed. I believe we were all blessed. And those that didn't come, I hope you logged on uh, online. It was a very awesome moment. And um, we thank God for what God is doing in our mission, in the life of our daddy and mommy Gio, in the life of uh, RCCG as a whole, and every member of RCCG. And our jubilee will be permanent as daddy has prayed in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, praise the Lord. So, we're going to be taking the word. The topic said, says we need a revival part one. Sister Josephine, are you? Okay, praise the Lord. So, we, uh, once the um, photocopies come, we'll share. Okay, so, but I'll take it from, from here. So, and our text is taken from the book of Osea, chapter 6, from verses 1 to 3. And Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. Okay, so um, you can put up the King James Version for now. And then we we'll now go to the NIV. Habakkuk, OCS 6, 1 to 3. If you're there, you can quickly read for us. And Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. Okay, so we have it online. It says, come and let us return. Unto the Lord, for he had torn, and he will heal us. He had smitten, and they will bind us up. He says, after two days, will he revive us? In the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and it shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain unto the earth. And Abaku chapter 3 verse 2 says, O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years, and in the midst of the years make known in wrath remember mercy. Please can you give me the NIV version of these two, um, two passages? NIV technical. Okay, say, Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, O Lord. Renew them in our day, in our time. Make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. Yes, verse 2. Lord, I have heard. Sorry. Okay, come, let us return to the Lord. Oseas chapter 6. Now I'm reading from NIV. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wings. Verse 2, please. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us, that we may live in his presence. And verse 3. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, it will appear. It will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the head. And then the second passage, Abaku chapter 3, verse 2. Abaku chapter 3, verse 2. I think that was the first passage that, yes. Abaku chapter 3, verse 2, please. Okay. Oh Lord, I have heard the speech. 
and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrought remember mercy. Praise the Lord. So I say today we are talking about we need a revival. And I'm taking the introduction from the manual. It said that what is a revival? A revival means a religious awakening, arousing from spiritual slumber, a rekindling of a dying spiritual flame, a refilling of a dying spiritual lamp with divine oil. We We believe many, if not all of us, need a revival. So I will take that again. What is a revival? It means a religious awakening, arousing from spiritual slumber, a rekindling of a dying spiritual flame, a refilling of a dying spiritual lamp with divine oil. And I love what the manual said. He said, we need if not all of us, most of us, and probably all of us will need a revival now. If you look at what is happening, there is no doubt in my heart and your heart that the church is not where it used to be. And the church is not where it should be. Say so two things. We are not where we used to be, and we are not where we ought to be. Because it's not only to be where we used to be, we should not even only just be where we used to be, we should have even advanced beyond that. Because Jesus said, I said what? Greater works than this shall you do. The funniest thing is not only that we are not doing the greater works, even the one we used to do, the question is, are we doing it? So there is no doubt in my heart and in your heart that we need, the church needs a revival. We need a revival. This is, it's so jamming, it's so key, it's so important that I don't know how else, I look at it, there's no, no much um, breaking down anything, there's no many, I mean, bringing revelation. It is black and white. It's very clear and straightforward. There's no need using any nice message or whatever. It's just for us to hear this and be, 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 be gingered in our spirit and not be happy with ourselves, not to be, not to be um, what will I say, not to be satisfied with where we are. Praise the Lord. So it means a, 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 an awakening. The church needs to, to awake. The church needs to wake up. The Bible said that while men slept, what happened? What did the enemy do? The enemy came and saw stairs. The enemy came and saw stairs. And whether we like it or not, brethren, we have slept. And some of the things we are reaping today is because we slept and the enemy took over. By the time we wake up, the the train has gone. We are not trying to chase the train. So the Lord will, will wake me and you up. We, I mean, there's no... There's no, there's no need to uh, convince you with so many words of, of mine. There's, I mean, it's very clear. He said, a rekindling from a dying flame. The fire has gone down. The fire has gone down. I mean, you, we, can, we can all cast our mind back how it all started. You can't go to the presence of God and remain the same. You look, to, you look forward to it. Because you know there will be an encounter. There will be a visitation. But sometimes look at it. It's almost like just gathering together. The, as the Bible says, the people come as they, I mean, they go as they come. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. He said a dying spiritual lamb. Revealing of a dying spiritual lamb. With what? With divine oil. We need our lamb to be refilled again with oil. It's just like anybody with car. If you drive the car for so long and you don't refuel, what happens? You will get to, yes, you know the car can still work on reserve. To me, it's like the church is still, it's the reserve that is still carrying. The little that we have is the reserve. As we read today in Open Heavens, he said that you have a name 
in the, 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 the letter of um, the letter that we read to the church, I've forgotten the name of the church that was mentioned specifically. It said you have a name that you are alive. It said, but what? You are dead. It's a very dangerous position. I don't know whether you understand what I'm, what I'm saying. Everybody sees the person, the person is alive, but actually the person is not. And it's a very precarious, I mean, a very dangerous position to be as a church, as a children of God. But brethren, the painful thing is that is where most, if not all, ha, we have an outward appearance that we are alive. But truly, truly deep inside, are we really alive? That's what the Lord is telling us today. And the same, so we're going to, he said, he said, I believe that, that, I believe that many, if not all, of us need a revival. I will leave you to judge that by the time we go through, there's a 11 point uh, criteria that we're going to look through. I've weighed myself on it, I've scored myself, and we are going to, each every one of us, we're going to weigh ourselves. And the question goes, what we are dealing with, this is part one, there will be part two of this message, but this is part one. And in this part one, we want to see who needs a revival. And he says, what can I know? When can I know that I need a revival? How do we know that the church of, in Nigeria need a revival? How do we know that the world, the church in the world as a whole need a revival? And the man of God gave us, we have about 11 points. Very simple, but I would say that they are like litmus tests. You understand? When you want to test something. That, and it's very easily uh, measured. Very easily measured. Except the Bible said that, it said that, look into yourself, except you, but you be a reprobate. If you are still what? If you are still in faith. And that is what this message has brought to us today, for us to look into ourselves, for me to look into myself. Number one, he said that, when can I know that I need a revival? There are several danger signs along the pilgrim's pathway that can warn us, warn him or her of the need for a revival. Some of them are these listed points, but they are not just all, but these are the main points. So do we have the manual? Have we, have we distributed it? Not yet. Okay, I wanted everybody to partake. So we're going to take it one after the other. The first one says that when you pray less than before. Can we read 1 Thessalonians 5, 17? Another person open to 1 Timothy. There are a lot of Bible verses. This is a digging deep. This is a Bible study. So please bring out your Bible. We're going to partake in everything. So 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, and I'm going to start by uh, with uh, Nifemi. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, then I'm going to start with, uh, continue with Nifemi's dad, and then we'll go like that, okay? So 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, 1 Timothy 2, 8, James 5, 13, 16. So Nifemi, please, can you take that? 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Okay, if, he, she's, if he's not yet there, the next person... 1 Timothy 2, 8, James 5, 13, 16. Any of this, anybody ready with any of these passages? So, number one point, say when you do what? When you pray less. When you pray less. So, if you look at our life as an individual, as a church, is the church as prayerful as it used to be? Am I as prayerful as I used to be? As I used to be? If my answer is no, definitely what? What do I need? What do I need? A revival. What does the church need? A revival. Praise the Lord. Yes, first, Thess first Thessalonians five seventeen. Are we there? Okay, we can say it off head. What is it? Pray without word, without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Yes, you may not be always be able to lean down on your feet, but we should live a prayerful life. You may not always have the luxury of locking yourself up for 12 hours, 24 hours, especially if you are not a full-time. Even if you are a full-time, there's a limit to. But he said that we should be in an attitude of what? Prayer. 
from time to time. If you look at your life as a, as, as, as a child of God, did you start with five minutes and you reach one hour? But now, if you are struggling to do 30 minutes, to do that five minutes you started with, definitely what? We need a revival. And without that in my heart, I know most of us, we agree that what? We are not as prayerful as we used to be. So if we start praying less, if we pray less, then it's time for us to what? Pray for revival. Yes, First Timothy 2 8. First Timothy 2 8. Yes. Are we therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without words and, and doubting. doubting? So we are, to, we are urged to do what? To pray everywhere. So it is not just even when you are in your everywhere, in everything, we are all towards to pray. But are we doing that? Uh, when if you there's no time, if you read the beginning of this passage, uh, the Bible said that I said that first and foremost that what we should pray for who? For who? All men. And then for what? Rulers that we may do what? Live a peaceable life. You know, like a joke, I may be wrong, but I mean, I really mean it. I see the all men that we refuse to pray for. Eh? That we are praying for, God bless me, God bless me. Eh? We are now suffering. <laughs> because that's what the Bible says. I, if you take that word, if you have time, read. For, the Bible says first and foremost, that prayer should be made for and supplication, not even just ordinary prayer. You see, and supplication be made for what? For all men. You see, first and foremost. And then say, pray for rulers. He said that we may what? We may live a peaceable and do what? And quiet life. Of recent, I just say, we are the cause, we are the one that caused this menace to ourselves. Because if we have gone, if we have taken that commandment of first and foremost, but what do we do first and foremost for ourselves? What do we do? Eh? We pray for ourselves. We pray for blessings. We pray for car. We pray for this. And then the car that we have gotten, the men we didn't pray for are coming to what? No, <laughs> it's funny. Do you understand? The blessings we have prayed for, the men we did not pray for, they are what? They are not, they're not allowing us to, to enjoy the blessing. So because we, have, we, didn't, we didn't get the question right, that's where we are today. I was jokingly telling my husband, "Say, should be somebody pray that give me Scotland and I die. How where is the person that will give me pray that give me Nigeria? I said, or oh, should I resign? <laughs> no, I meant it. I said, maybe I should resign. Take me and then just let God give. Is it not possible? I believe somebody prayed for a nation like Scotland and people were giving their life to Christ even without a, miles away. Those things, that same God is what we are talking about. Those are the days of what? Raw miracles and revival. Is God not able to do that today? He's able. If we are going to do what? If we are going to pray. And the Bible says he's looking for what? One man to do what? To stand in the gap. How many millions of people are in Nigeria? Is it so difficult for God to get that one man? God will help us in Jesus' name. So this thing is very, very true. Okay, please, can I have a copy of that um, of the other one. Okay, praise the Lord. So, if you begin to pray less, the church is praying less, and until we get back, we have to. Then the question is not just also the prayer, the content of our prayer. The content of our prayer. The content of our meetings. Most of the time is about us, about blessing, about this, not about the people. But God said first and foremost for all men. It's not only that we should go back to prayer, but we should also what? Change the content of our prayer. To do what first and foremost that prayer be made for all men. The Bible says that God, God that wishes that all men come to what? To repentance and salvation. Praise the Lord. It is the will of God that the whole of Nigeria be saved. To tell you the truth, I've started praying for Boko Haram and for the leaders to be saved. Yes, even that's why the father does. I'm praying for it. I have some that uh, I said, This is what the Bible said I should do, and I'm doing it. Maybe by the time I do that more, the faith will arise. It looks impossible, Abby, that the Boko Haram, the terrorists, all of them will give their life to Christ. But that's what the Bible told us to do. Say, first and foremost, pray for what? all men. Are Boko Haram saw men? Yes. A terrorist woman, yes. What did he say? 
pray for them to be what? To be saved. The Bible said that God wants all men to do what? To be saved and come to the knowledge of salvation. So let's start changing. Not only that we should pray more only, but also we should change the content of our prayers. To include what? All men coming to what? Coming to salvation. I jokingly said, if the president gets born again today, the, the, the whole prayer is answered. And it, does it take God anything to get him born again? It doesn't take God anything. It only takes what? One man that will stand in the gap. May God find me and you worthy to be that man. Then he said that when you do not study the word as before, Joshua 1 8, yes. Joshua 1 8. And if I am still yet to hear from you, Joshua 1 8. Deuteronomy 17, 18 to 19. Deuteronomy 17, 18 to 19. The word of God. The word of God. Are you there? Okay. Joshua 1, 8. If you are there, please take it. Then somebody has to open to Deuteronomy 17, 18 to 19. Joshua 1, 8. Yes. This book of the law oh. shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou, thou, for then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then shalt have good success. Then another person, seventeen, eighteen to nineteen. My wife to himself, that is our turn not away, neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold, and he shall be when he is seated upon the throne of the kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of the law in a book out of that which is before the priest, the Levites. That's it. On 19, please. And it shall, yes. and it shall be with him. And he shall read here in all the days of his life, mm. that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, mm. to keep all the words of the law, and those that to, to Praise do them. the Lord. I love that passage that says, he say, and he shall read there in when? Once a week of his days of his life, once a month, when? All the days of his life, we shall read there him. But how many times, how often do we give, apart from the time you come to church, how often do you go back and study the word? And then even if you do, comparatively to how you used to, is it the same? So if we are not reading as we used to do, it's time for what? For revival. And thank God for the passage they made. The series we just finished on Psalm chapter 1. And it says here, blessed is the man, Psalm 1, 1 to 2. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinner, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is where? He's in the law of the Lord. And his law doth he meditate day and night. If you find the light more in sitting and gisting with friends, then it's time for revival. If you find the light more, in, I mean, solving the internet from one thing to the other, one social media form to the other, then it's time for revival. And whether we like it or not, that is what is happening now. You can stand, I, 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 I've said it here, one day, I, that's what uh, made me to remove opera news from my phone. When I came back from, from work, I didn't even put my bag down. And I was going from one news uh, edition to the other. By the time I realized I was on my feet, for almost an hour reading the news with my bag on, on my shoulder. If somebody said that, don't sit down, carry your Bible and be reading it with your bag, I say, ah, ah, God is not a wicked God, Joe. Let me rest. So there's time for revival. We look as if that one hour Bible study is too much. But just try yourself. By the time you saw those green messages on your phone, and you want to sort them out. At the end of checking through those green messages, check how many minutes have gone. But if it was the Bible, either we are dozy, or we are tired, or we are not even finding it interesting. 
So the church will need revival. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And I will take Proverbs 3, 1 to 4 from here. He say, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandment. For length of this and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine eye. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of who? God and man. Are you looking for favor? It's time to actually study the word from time to time. Praise the Lord. The next point, which is the third criteria, to know who needs a revival. Praise the Lord. Is what? When you do what? When you sleep too much. And Proverbs 6, 9 to 11, whosoever is there, Proverbs 6, 9 to 11, he said, How long without sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. He says, So, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth and thy want as an armed man. Children of God, we are sleeping. The church of God is what? Is sleeping. And then what is happening now? We see poverty all around. We see trouble all around because the church slept. Just as it, was, it is written in the, in, in the Bible that why men slept, what happened? Enemies came and sowed tears. May the Lord wake us up all from our slumber in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, love not sleep. Let thou come to, come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. This, this, this is truth for both spiritual and physical. If while we should be reading, you are sleeping, what happens at the end of the day? At the, the result come now, work is out. You are hearing 9A1s, 324, 343. Have you been hearing some result? 9A1s like that, 16 year old. What happened? That is the student. That did not sleep. And in this same resort, I have a very close relation of mine that forwarded it to me, and she was not happy. She said, Auntie, I didn't make it. E's and B's. I mean, E's and, and, and fail. I think she had about two credits or so. What happened to her? She slept. And the same thing to it also spiritually. If we should sleep, why we should be praying, why we should be reading the word of God? Spiritual poverty will come upon us, and that is what is happening now. May the Lord wake us up in the name of Jesus. So when you sleep too much, when you cannot take through a vigil, before you can do four, three hours, five hours, but 12 midnight, 30 minutes into the prayer, we've, we've started snoring. It's time for revival. Praise the Lord. Now, the next thing he said, when you are depressed or sad, when you are depressed or sad, then it is time for revival. John 14, 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. So instead of these times, yes, well, I mean, it's a very depressing moment when you are hearing it, might hit a uh, document. Yes, when you hear that and you, you know, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I was discussing with a patient, we just, uh, you know, and then I, I found out that my emotion was hot, as in, I mean, you know, yes, because if we know that we have a God, and I can approach that God and, I mean, rain justice, you know, we're very, I was, it, it's actually depressing, but if all those things are actually shaking us and shaking our faith, it's time for revival. They are, they, they are strong enough to shake our faith. But if we have, if you really have a vibrant faith, I mean, we we'll decree and things will come to pass. Praise the Lord. So if you're depressed or you're sad at this time, it's time for revival. It's time for revival. It's time for us to go on our, our knees. He said, for his anger endured but a moment. In his favor is life. He said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but, deliver, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. When you are hearing Christians taking their lives, when you are hearing Christians committing suicide in the house of God, in, so, in short, the church will need a revival. Praise the Lord. Then it says another point, which is point five, when little things begin to offend you. You know, I said that at 11 points, you put yourself on a scale, 
is they are very measurable. They are not, they are not something that is out of this world, very measurable. That you can measure yourself and say, indeed, I need a revival. I say, when little things begin to offend you, then at times, it's time for revival. When you're already looking at, this sister look at me somehow. Somebody is matching my leg. Why did he do that? Why did they say that? It's time for revival. Because when we are not focused on what we should do, when we are not focused on discipling people, when we are not focused on evangelism, then all those things now become, becomes, becomes our focus. When you are getting offended, it's because you have let what? You have let the real thing. If you are busy discipling somebody, if you are busy praying and raining prayers on somebody, if you are busy evangelizing, you will not even see who look at you or who didn't greet you. But when we have left the real thing, then all the things now become, become, I mean, we take offense. I normally tell people that why we are seeing that, they, some people say they are getting bored in the Christian race. I say, why are we bored? It's because we are not doing what we should do. If you have at your heart evangelism, discipling people, you, are thinking, you can't get bored. But by the time the Christian race is becoming boring, then you have left what you need to do. Because there is so much to do. That's the way I see it. It's becoming boring. The race is becoming boring because you have left what you need to do. If you, if you have people that you are evangelizing, discipling, it cannot be boring. If you are taking offenses because you have left what we need to do, the Lord will help us and revive us in the mighty name of Jesus. So is somebody in Jeremiah 10 verse 23? It is not in man that will to direct his step. That will let to that work it to direct his steps. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, then the next one say, when your love for material wealth begin, when, when your love for material wealth is overriding your love or begins to override your love for spiritual wealth, praise the Lord. That's point number six. When your love for material wealth begins to override your love for spiritual wealth, then it's time for revival. And we're going to take 1 John 2, 15 to 17. If you're there, please read it for me. And I'm going to add a verse to that. Luke 21, 34. Somebody should open Luke 21, 34. Um, then 1 John 2, 15 to 17. Okay, 1 John 2, 15 to 17. Yeah. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17. Okay. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. Mm. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Okay. Anybody in Luke 21, 34? Luke 21, 34. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with softened and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that, and so that they commit unto you on her ears. Can we have an uh, NIV of this verse? For some, um, Luke 21, 34. Praise the Lord. Uh, I came across this verse very early in my Christian race. And brethren, to tell you the truth, is a verse I dreaded. It's a verse that I, I, I was a bit apprehensive. But to tell you the truth, this is where the church is now. We have been overcharged. And if you ask me, I will say that this is the root of the slumberness and the, con the position of the, of the condition of the church now. We are now operating two extremes. We were on the extreme of it is spiritual to be poor. It is be spiritual to be, at the, to be the last. It is spiritual 
So when we got the revelation that no, we are now back to the extreme of materialism. Why is it that we are not spending time? Daddy said something. The day Daddy asked that question, I had a funny answer. Daddy said, what are the two things that we are chasing after? I mean, that you know. So I said, uh, um, I think I've forgotten. And I said, then your life partner, as in two things that you are chasing after. And Daddy answered the question, and I very much agree with him. We are chasing after God and what? And money. That's what we're seeking. So the church has now used the seeking. That's what, I mean, look at everything. You understand, you go to school to do what? So that you get, you, you get degree, you'll be able to make money. You give your life to Christ because you want to know God. That's the, those are the two things. You, work, you went out this morning, my agenda is that I will go to work from work, I'll come to church. Who am I chasing? I'm chasing God, I'm chasing money. So the question is, if you don't balance this thing, you will, you become what? Overcharged, and that is where the church is. I came across this verse, are we in NIV? It said, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time you, your heart be what? Overcharged. Overcharged. With sufferingting, I wanted us to bring out that verse so that we can break the sufferingting now. And drunkenness and cares of this life so that so that they come upon you what on her ears. This is where the church is. We have been overcharged. I remember that the uh, that the um, Sogoma always says something that what um, woman beings esteem is nothing before God. This is what we esteem now. But what the Bible say, it says that they will all what pass away until we go back and balance things. We will not go back to the closet. Until we go back and balance things, we will not rule the word of God. Until we go back and balance things, we will not make out time for evangelism and all those things. So this area has to be well addressed as a church. I don't know whether how many of us got the post of one woman. I don't know. She said she saw. But I don't even think she needs to see. But it's not just... She said she saw that Jesus was weeping on the cross. I don't know whether we saw that in WhatsApp post. And he told us, he said that you know, Jesus sent her that the pastors should go and change their word messages. And I, normally, I told people that this is what my husband has been saying. Messages needs to work, change. And I thank God for the messages coming out of this pulpit, not because I'm a member of this church. But I thank God for the messages coming out. If we are going to take heed to these messages, we will not remain the same in Jesus' name. So, we must not be over. We must, but he said, take heed to ourselves. So, what Jesus is trying to do is very easy for our heart to be well, to be overcharged. Because two things we are seeking, God and money. And if we are not careful, the love for money will override. And then we will still say, I love God, I love God. But are we, are we in our first love? Are we in a, you know, you can be telling a woman, I love you, and, you know, at the back. You understand? So, are we telling God, I love you? But really, really, it's not. So, the question is, is our heart being overcharged? And we have, it's a take heed, and we have to really take it. Do you understand? So that with the cares of this life, yes, we have to eat. Yes, we have to clothe. But we have to take it so that we don't overdo it. We don't become, we don't overdo it. And then the, 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 the message from the pulpit has to change to what eternal things that matter. That is going to should be seen above these material things. I need to run to rush the remaining point. The next thing is when you would overeat. I know that that um, some some people even the the fasting, the church fasting, mm -hmm, they will not join. It's time for revival. You cannot call for fasting and you're sure that the entire the entire mission is fasting. There was something that happened one day, and one person said, are you sure they are fasting? And that's the truth. Sometimes you don't even want to share food, because if you share the food, and it's a fasting time, you will see people, workers, eating. What happened? They can't fast. So it's time for revival. Praise the Lord. He said that for the drunkard and the glutton shall come toward 
poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. If as a church we eat too much, the Bible says we are going to come to poverty spiritually. And then the, mm, the next point, uh, when you easily become impatient, which we can also relate with what we had before, it said, um, <clears throat> for you, need, you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might what? You might receive the promise. The next thing, when you talk too much. I don't know of you, if you look at yourself, if the way you used to be quiet and how you talk now, then you know that there's time for revival. That is time for revival. In, in those days, they were not, normally they were saying, you are too quiet, uh, you are playing spirituality. So now, uh, you need to be sociable. That's what we are talking about. But even talking too much shows that word, it's time for revival. He said, if any among you seem to be religious, and bridlet not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in fin. He said there is a time in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 7, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. But now we just take, we just let loose, just speak anyhow. Even the time to keep quiet and receive inspiration. If you keep on talking, you will not even hear what God is trying to tell us. Praise the Lord. Then the next thing he said, when your faith grows weak, Psalm 27 verse 1, he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? If, I normally say, I don't like it, but I will tell you, when I see, I'm driving in traffic and I just see somebody just passing by, I'll force you like this, I'll say, ah, but you're a Christian now, why are you afraid? But that's happened. So if the next thing, small thing you are jittery, small thing you are, you are afraid, you know, it's time to check ourselves. I don't like it, but it keeps on happening. You know, when somebody, or sometimes it's just people like this, you first shake like this, so what do you want? You know, you understand. So, but that is not the, that we should be a person of faith. So it's time for revival. When we are not as filled with faith as we should, it's time for revival. And then he said that when you worry over little things, when you worry, the Bible says, cast your cares, what, upon me, because what, I care for you. Do you understand? But any little thing, if the first thing we do is to worry, it's time what? It's time for revival. So it says that um, some, sorry, that's a, a first Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your care upon him for he cared for you. So here there are about, I think, 11 points. I just read through without reading the verses and just gauge yourself. When you pray less, it's time for revival. When you do not study the word of God as before, it's time for revival. When you sleep too much, it's time for revival. When you are depressed or sad, it's time for revival. When little things begin to offend you, it's time for revival. When your love for material wealth is overriding your longing for spiritual wealth, it's time for revival. When you overheat, time for revival. When you cannot sustain a fast, when they call fast, and you cannot join the fast, or you, 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 I mean, you are overeating, it's time for revival. When you easily become impatient, it's time for revival. When you begin to talk too much, it's time for revival. When your faith grows weak, it's time for revival. When you worry over little things, it's time for revival. So that is the part one of this message. I just want us to, uh, because of our time, I don't know whether we can take questions or contribution, maybe just for the next two, three minutes. But above all, it's not deliberation. It's not in sweet words. But it's time for us to everybody go and check our lives and pray forward for grace. When I saw this, I was just praying that God have mercy and give grace. That's all I could. When I saw the manual, I said, God have mercy and give grace. I don't know whether our daddy has any control. Thank you so much for the teaching tonight, man. Greater grace in Jesus' name. Yeah, I just want to comment on two things. Number one is about praying for your enemies. The Bible says, pray for your enemy. 
uh, when I came in, I had a teacher saying, okay, I'm praying, sometimes I'm praying, but now then, I, but I said, okay, the Bible says I should pray. Okay, pray for your enemies simply means, what should you pray for? Somebody may ask, why should, do I need to pray for my enemy? Because most of the time, what do we do now? God, God punish them. crush my enemy, <laughs> fall and die. And so what prayer do I need to pray for my enemy? The prayer, when Jesus Christ said, pray for your enemy, this, what he's saying is, pray for the salvation of their souls. Pray that your enemy will get on again. And you remember that the Jew will say to us, if you pray and your enemy gets born again, yeah. they will leave you. They won't trouble you again. So, so that we don't get we don't get it mixed up and then we don't begin to query why do I need to pray for my enemy? The only prayer you need to pray for your enemy is for them to get saved. And what will move you? What will motivate you to do that? The love you have for their souls. That you don't want their souls to end up in hell. So, from tonight, how many of us will begin to pray for enemies? Okay. So, when they get born again, they will leave us alone. They will, but they will become your friend and they won't trouble you again. The second thing is God and Mammon. Mammon is money. Um, what do we chase about now? We chase God, we chase after money. But one thing by the special grace of God I have done over the years that has helped me. Number one, is to see money coming from God. Okay? I know, and that's my own principle, and by the grace of God, that's the way I have run to this money. I know whatever money God has not given to me, I cannot get. So that has made me to subject myself to God, only to God. So if sometimes when I'm broke and I don't have money, the reason why I don't chase after it, the reason why I don't free it, the reason why I don't get it is because I know my supplier is there. And once I tell him, Daddy, I need this, he brings it. Sometimes in the, in the manner, I can't even reason it out. I can't even think about it. I can't even fathom it. Fathom it. But it will come. That has helped me to put all of my trust in God when it comes to my financial and my material needs. Sometimes I say to God, Father, you know, you are the only Father I have in heaven and earth. My earthly Father is cuckoo gone. So, in heaven, in earth, you are the only one I have. And honestly, he has, he has never failed me. So, that has helped me not to ever place money in my heart above God. Because I know my supply can only come from God. If I take my focus or my eyes away, from that principle, then I will begin to use my own power, my own energy to want to get money. And the moment I begin to use my own power, my own energy to begin to, to look for money, I will do things that will displease God. So at that point, I started chasing after money more than chasing after God. So maybe this will help somebody to know that whatever God has not given to you, you if you know, I will tell you, if you like, go and knock your head against the wall. If God is not giving it to you, it won't come. 
So, and God gave me a principle. I know he, he lost me specially. I had not even been born again when he gave me that principle. Do we know that God speaks to unbelievers too? You don't know? He does. He begins to prepare you somehow, somehow, somehow. It's just that you don't pay attention because his spirit is not yet in you. But sometimes his spirit will come in, say something, but you don't know it's the spirit of God because you are not yet of him. I wasn't yet born again when I was in the university, uh, when they started this SAP and whatever. Uh, is it SAP then? Structural Adjustment uh, Program and all those things, and government was preparing us, things would be getting tough, and this, 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 this. I was just walking JJ on the go, and something said to me, see, since the day you were born, till the day you will return to God, he has already made provision for you. Everything we need, your own is just to ask him, and say, God, I need this. I need this. I wasn't born again when I got that. And I started practicing it immediately. So when others were shouting, hey, sap, hey, this, hey, that, I would remember that thing that was printed in my heart. Since from the day you were born, till when you will go back to God, he has already made provision for you. All you need just to do is to what? Ask. It's when I got born again that I know that, okay, fine. So this is, thing is from the, the Bible. Ask and it shall be given unto you. May the Lord help us to rest our mind, not to get depressed. Because I tell people, if you think about Nigeria, don't kill yourself, oh. Uh, that's the truth. When I say to people I don't think about Nigeria again, they will think I'm joking. I'm not. I may talk, I may say, but for it to affect me, no. Why? Because I know I have a shepherd, the one who kept the children of Israel in Goshen, in the land of Egypt, in the midst of famine and poverty kept his own children in a place, flourishing place, that same God is still there. So if they said, hey, this is happening there, that is happening this, this is, I don't care. It doesn't get me bothered because I know the one watching over me will always pay attention to me. When we take our eyes, our focus away from God, we will get depressed. So just make up your mind. God is either you or nothing else. And I know you never leave me. You never forsake me. However tough it may be, you will single me out. Bishop Oedeko says something that I want to close with. He said, even if they are changing uh, one dollar for one thousand uh, naira. Even if they are selling fuel for one thousand naira per liter, you know what? You should be your own prayer. God, always give me money enough to be able to buy, enough to be able to convert to dollars to whatever money I need in the world. And I keyed into that. So, hey, dollar is changing for this. So, mm, I don't care. It's changing for that. God, just give me enough naira. More than enough naira to get the dollar I want. To get the pants I want. To get the euro I want. And to buy the fuel I need to buy. Now we are buying diesel for... In fact, there was a day we bought it for 830. I was not moved because even if they are selling it for 1,000, I picked that message from Bishop. God will give me to be able to buy. And I will buy it conveniently. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Thank you for that uh, detailed contribution.
And um, when daddy was saying this, that we should look at God as our source. It's when we think we are the one that will provide our, for ourselves. That's when we leave God and start chasing him. And there is no way, if you are chasing it out of God, there is no way you will not be in trouble. And that's from what daddy said, I just remembered this passage, First Chronicles 29, 12, which I just want to um, leave us with. It says, both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thine hand is power and might, and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength to, unto all. So the riches that we are looking for, the honor that we are looking for is what? It's come from what? From God. So instead of chasing after the riches, who do we chase after? We chase after God. And then invariably, just as our daddy has told us, those riches will come. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Thank you, sir, for that contribution. So shall we just close our eyes and just pray? As I, as I said, when I saw this message, I said, God, have mercy and supply grace. Let's pray that God will have mercy on the church. Let's pray that God will have mercy on me. Let's pray that God will have mercy on each and every one of us. Because whether we like it or not, we have found ourselves wanting even on the scale of this about 11 or 12 criteria, that God will have mercy where we have been found wanting and supply the grace that we need that we may be revived once again. Everlasting Father, we thank you for sending your word that is very apt and very necessary for a time like this, Lord. And Father, we pray, have mercy on us where we have a name that we live, but we are dead. Where we have a name, Father, where we have less our first love. Father, we say, just have mercy on us. And help us and give us the grace to strengthen those things that remain that, that are yet to die. And give us the grace to go back to where we were so that we might get to where you want us to be. Thank you, Father, Lord. We bless your mighty holy name that we will not be just hearers of this world or just the preacher of this world. But Father, make us the doers of this world that this world will not stand against us, Father, on that day. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Let's bow our heads to pray for the minister that God has used tonight and ask the Lord to refill her in the mighty name of Jesus, that even she herself, she will be revived, body, soul, and spirit, and do exploits for the Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Have we been blessed this evening? Okay. Welcome everyone once again to service. Do we have anyone worshiping with us for the first time? While we are taking the announcements, please, the offering basket will be passed around and envelopes will be shared. Please do well to drop your offering. Account numbers are on the screen so you can also make use of alternative means of giving your offering. Let's give our offerings joyfully. And God will bless us. While we listen to the following announcements, please, if this is your first time of fellowshipping with us, we'd like to welcome you. Let's just see you wave your hand. Your first time in the master's court. Okay? So let's just welcome ourselves. Welcome your neighbor to your left and to your right. For the sake of those that might be listening online and joining us for the first time, we'll just run through our service times. On Sundays, we have two services. First service begins at 8 a.m. and ends at 9 a.m. and the Sunday school follows from 9 to 9.45 a.m. and 9.45 a.m. the second service begins. On Tuesdays and Thursdays we have Digging Deep here from 6 to 7 p.m. and on Thursdays are Prevailing Prayers also from 6 to 7 p.m. Combined service holds every first Sunday of the month and that's by 9 a.m. RCCG LP 24 September Global Vigil will hold on Friday, the 9th of September, 2022, by 11 p.m., here at the Master's Court. Please, everyone is encouraged to come with family and friends. It promises to be an awesome time, so let's go out and spread the word that on Friday, the 9th of September, there will be video here by 11 p.m. There will be no divine revolution this month of August. 
please let's take note of that. We have come to the end of the service. Let's bow our heads as we pray for the offering. Father, we thank you for the offering of your children. We ask, Lord, that you will please accept us and accept our offerings. And that you will bless it, Lord, and that your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, shall we be upstanding? Shall we rise on our feet as we bring this service to a close? I'd like you to talk to the Lord. Thank him for another time in his presence. And pray that even as you have heard the word today, you will be revived. The, the God will begin to revive you and revive all that concerns you and concerns our nation. And even as you go home, the Lord will be with you tonight and even give you a good night's sleep and reveal himself unto you afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for everything you have done for us. We thank you for the service of today. We ask, Lord, as we go, your presence will continue to go with us. And when we return, Lord, on Thursday, we'll come back with a lot of testimonies on our lips. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Shall we share the grace in fellowship? With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let's take our creed. TMC, we are the offshoot of Jesus Christ. Raised to raise others, we shall continue to grow and we will never diminish. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.